Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. We're going to continue our series of basic watch repair with lesson number six, the powertrain and how to install bridges. If this is your first time, my name is Alex and I make videos on watch repair, service, and troubleshooting. So if that sounds like something you'd be interested in, let's get started. When people talk about the balance wheel as being the heartbeat of a watch, the powertrain would be equal to the muscles, if you will. This is where all the power to run the watch comes from. And it's extremely important that this is in good working order. The bridges you'll see as you get further into watch repair come in all different kinds of configurations. Sometimes the barrel bridge will just house the barrel and the train bridge will house the train wheels. Sometimes the escape wheel will have its own bridge. So let's start by disassembling the train bridge. Now the train bridge is held onto the plate with two screws and a couple steady pins underneath the bridge. Let's take the screws out. Just like when we were removing the balance bridge, you take a screwdriver, you stick it between the plate and the bridge to break it free. Then you can just take your tweezers and lift the bridge away. Now we can remove the barrel bridge. The wheels of the barrel bridge are pretty simple to identify. You have the first wheel, the second wheel, the third wheel, the fourth wheel, and the fifth wheel. Now the first wheel is normally referred to as the mainspring barrel. The second wheel sometimes is referred to as the great wheel or center wheel. Sometimes the fourth wheel will be referred to as the second wheel because it's the pinion of the fourth wheel that carries the second's hand. And the fifth wheel is pretty much always referred to as the escape wheel. If you saw our video on the motion works, you will remember that the motion works works on a reduction ratio. You have the cannon pinion, which turns the teeth on the minute wheel. The minute wheel has a pinion, which turns the teeth on the hour wheel because the purpose of a reduction ratio is to slow things down. But with the powertrain, it's the complete opposite. The goal here is to speed things up. These wheels all start off slow and progressively get faster all the way to the escapement. Now the gearing ratios are gonna be different depending on the beat of the watch. This particular one is 18,000 beats per hour. The mainspring arbor in this watch makes one revolution every eight hours. The arbor of the second wheel makes one rotation every hour. That's why it carries the minute hand. The third wheel makes one rotation approximately every seven and a half minutes. The fourth wheel pivot makes one rotation every 60 seconds. That's why it carries the second hand. And the pivot on the escape wheel makes one rotation every six seconds. So you're probably asking yourself, how in the world is that gonna help me put a train bridge on? Well, honestly, it's not. The reason I'm mentioning this is because this is the kind of information that you're gonna wanna have down the road a little bit in order to be able to troubleshoot. And this is the kind of information that I'm gonna be giving you. So if you haven't subscribed, I don't know what you're waiting for. Also, when you understand the relationship between the teeth and the pinions on the wheels, it makes it a lot easier to find your way if you can't remember where something goes. In this movement, the teeth of the mainspring barrel turn the pinion leaves of the center or second wheel. Just as a side note, this is the arbor that the cannon pinion friction fits onto. Now the teeth of the second wheel turn the pinion leaves of the third wheel. You'll notice that the pinion on the third wheel has a cutout in it. This is really only to make clearance for the 
fourth wheel, the teeth of the third wheel, turn the pinion leaves of the fourth wheel, and you're looking at the long pivot that goes through the movement where the second hand sits, the teeth of the fourth wheel, turn the pinion of the escape wheel. So through all the changes of the gearing, you start with one wheel that makes one revolution every eight hours to the escape wheel, which makes one revolution every six seconds. Another thing that you may notice that's different about the escape wheel, other than the type of teeth that it has, these are called club feet, is that all the other wheels are made out of brass. The escape wheel is going to be made out of steel. Now to reassemble the wheels and bridges, we're going to start off with the mainspring barrel, and then we'll install the second wheel. You can see the teeth of the mainspring barrel turn in the pinion of the second wheel. The barrel bridge is pretty straightforward to line up as you have the mainspring barrel in the center wheel. So you could just lay it on and move it into place. Now it's always a good idea anytime you put a bridge on to check that the wheels and pivots are still engaging. You can clearly see the mainspring barrel turning the second wheel. We have one, two, three screws. So a good habit to get in is just like we did on the balance wheel, uh, the balance cock in the pallet fork bridge is to tighten the screws down until you feel the resistance and then stop turning and get all the screws tightened and then check to make sure that every, everything is still spinning freely and then finalize and finish tightening the screw to its final tightness. So we'll tighten the first screw, second screw, third screw. And then we can check, make sure everything's still spinning freely. Now we can finish tightening the screws. In the train bridge, sometimes the order of how the wheels are to be installed matters. In this particular movement, it doesn't really matter as much. You could put the third wheel and the escape wheel in and then put the minute wheel. But what we're going to do is put the third wheel in first. At this point, you want to make sure that the lower pivot is in its jewel hole. Now we'll install the fourth wheel. You can clearly see why the cutout on the third wheel is necessary for the clearance of the fourth wheel. And then we can slide in the escape wheel. When moving the wheels into position into their respective jewel holes, you want to do this with an extremely light touch. By grabbing the upper part of any of the wheels, you can gently move it side to side and you'll know you should be able to feel whether the pivot's in the hole. At this point, the goal is to have the wheels and the pinions meshing like they would be when the watch is running at least as close to that as you can get. So this looks pretty good. Now, when you bring in the train bridge, look to see where your jewels are and look to see how the pivots on the top of the wheels are positioned. Ideally, you wanna be able to lay the bridge on top of the pivots so that they all go straight into the hole, but that's almost never gonna happen. Again, just looking at the escape wheel pivot, it looks like it's not quite in its position. That's a little bit closer to where it will be sitting in the plate, basically standing up vertically. So when we bring in our plate, we're looking at the orientation of the jewel holes, as well as the orientation of the pivots, as well as looking for the locations of the screw holes so we can gently lay it into position on top of the pivots. Now using some sort of hold down just to steady the bridge, we want to check the free running of the wheels by turning the center wheel.
as you can see, all the pivots went directly into the holes that they should have. This was basically due to the fact that the pivots were standing straight up in their positions that they would be in the bridge, as well as lining up the bridge properly before it was laid down. So we're going to pull the bridge off and do it again, because I want to show you how to be able to adjust the wheels uh, that don't go into the pivots. Okay, so as I'm looking at it now, it looks like the escape wheel is still in the lower pivot, but it's not quite standing up straight. So let's put it back on again. Let's try it one more time. So now we'll come in with our bridge. And we'll drop it in something like that. Now that should be pretty close. Now again, so we'll put a, just a tiny bit of pressure to hold the plate down onto the pivots without putting any force on. And let's check the free running of the gears again. So I can see in this particular case that our center wheel is turning. I can also see the third wheel turning. You can, you can actually see it right between the two bridges. Looking closer at our pivots, I can clearly see that the third wheel is in its hole. The fourth wheel pivot is turning in its hole, but the escape wheel is not. Again, with the lightest amount of pressure on the bridge, and when we talk about light pressure on the bridge, the pivots, these extremely small little pivots, need to be able to move around under the bridge without bending. The purpose of holding the bridge in place is just so it doesn't slide around and the other pivots don't come out of the holes. Again, we're looking at the third and fourth wheel are already in their positions. We just need to move the escape wheel. So ideally you want to, the pivot should be visible in the top of the jewel. With this pivot visible in the jewel, you can then take a probe. And you can figure out which way you need to move the wheel. So just take your time. Make sure you don't have a lot of pressure on the plate. Because these pivots will bend very easily. And I think that was it. Now, going back up, I can now spin the second wheel. And our escape wheel is in the, is in its pivot. All the pivots are in their jewel holes. Now, when you're new, this could be very frustrating. You just have to take your time and be patient. What you don't want to do is break the pivots. If you find yourself struggling getting the bridge on, stop, take a moment just to walk away and relax, come back, get your pivots of the wheels lined up again, and then relay the bridge on top and try it again. Now, just like the other bridge, we'll drop in our two screws. We're going to tighten the screws down until we feel the screw hit a little resistance and we're going to stop. We'll go to our other screw, tighten it down until we feel the first bit of resistance and stop. Now we'll go back. We'll check the free running of our wheel of our all our wheels again. Everything's still spinning, which means everything is still in its pivot hole. And now we can finish and tighten our screws down to their final tightness. And there you have it. We all know that as you go through watch repair, 
Seems like you can spend a lot of money on tools. Well, one of the most important tools that I have and one that I use on a daily basis is actually handmade. These are the probes that I use for doing hairspring work. And I also use them for adjusting my wheels. All this is, is a piece of peg wood with a hole drilled in it with a sewing needle inserted in it. The lower one is also made from a sewing needle. You just heat up the end of the sewing needle so that you can bend it without breaking it. And then both of these have been polished. So a piece of peg wood with a sewing needle glued into it and polished is one of the most valuable tools in a tool that you'll use all the time. It's very simple, but effective. All right, that's going to do it for today, guys. As always, if you have any comments, questions, or video ideas, please drop a note down in the comments. We appreciate your support. And until next time, we're out of here.